Good morning. How is everybody today? Welcome, welcome. We are bringing in the light of Christ this morning. We invite you to also bring in the light of Christ here in the sanctuary. Um, we have some candles um, off screen. <laughs> and those of you who are joining us online, we also invite you to bring in the light of Christ this morning. Perfect. Good job. Thank you. My name is Christy McGuire, and I want to welcome you um, to worship this morning. We have a beautiful service um, planned for you, and I think we're going to start off with a poem, right? Hannah has, our last series had poetry in each week, and we became accustomed to hearing a word um, from that, and we, we didn't have a poem today, and so Hannah said, I would like to to write one, so I'm going to let her take it away. Oh, we're going to sing. Okay, I'm wrong. I was so excited for the poem. It's coming. Okay, it's coming. That, that was a teaser. Welcome. <laughs> Alice, alleluia, Alice, alleluia, Alice. Busy. I am busy. It all comes at once. A sharp, jagged, mini movie of phone calls, the never ending loop of homework, play dates, recordings, taking care of loved ones and animals. Things to do, then quickly forgotten, then remembered and done again. Work, work, repeat. Work, work, repeat. The early morning opening of my phone to read the morning devotions are few and far between. My prayers at dawn hastily mumbled, even as my daughter awakens. I am busy. And so, it has become easy to forget that you are here, in my heart, in my breathing, in the hustle and bustle that we call life. 
Too often, I am fully aware of your presence only when nearly all has been destroyed. My hurried best left wanting, a moment so ripe with the decay of failure that I can barely breathe. It is too much, too much to handle, and I fall to my knees where I should have been all along. I am quiet now, and I can finally hear you. Feel your never-ending love surrounding me and holding me close. You were there all along. I just didn't know it. I was too busy. Here, lean into me, you say. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Put your trust in me. I breathe in shakily, then out, long and slow. Now I can hear you. Now I can feel you. Gunakshish, great spirit, I whisper. I give my mess to you. Forgive me for forgetting that I am never alone, for I have you. Thanks. And thank you, Hannah. I want to invite you to stand as you feel comfortable in body or in spirit and join me this morning in the call to worship. In worship, may we, as welcoming as Sarah and Abraham, who were quick to serve the stranger. In faith, may we proclaim that nothing is too big for God. In moments of holy surprise, may we laugh with deep abiding joy. For God is in our presence today. And God is in our presence today. Let us worship holy God. I want to invite the children to come forward. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Did you have a good week? Or yeah. at least okay, you survived? That's good. So, this week we actually start a new series, technically, but it's a new theme for our message that we hear and everything we see around. I'm sure you guys have seen the altar. Looks kind of different today, right? It's a whole bunch of random scraps of fabric and big wheel yeah that was a hula hoop yesterday <laughs> um so this this season what we're going through is a series called unraveled um you can probably see behind you some of the threads are like you know coming away from the pattern and falling off and stuff like that have you guys ever had some clothes maybe that got a hole in them and kind of ripped and you got some threads hanging loose yeah so what we are learning about is um, how plans in our lives don't always go how we want them to. I'm a big planner, so I like to plan out my day. Does it ever work that way? No, it does not. <laughs> Never. So um, in, wor 
worship, we're going to be reading and listening to the word and learning about how even when we feel completely alone and like our life is falling apart, that God is still with us and we aren't alone. Um, and at the end of the series, that big giant hoop will actually, we will have woven all of the different scraps of thread and made a very pretty piece of art. So what we're going to do today, and I need your guys' help if you're willing, we're going to grab that basket up there on the right-hand side. It's got a whole bunch of little pieces of fabric. We're going to hand those out to everybody in the congregation, along with some markers. And then you guys also get to either write a prayer on the scrap of paper, you guys as well, big children, or you can draw a picture, you can literally just hold it and think about what you're struggling with, and then... We'll go ahead and have everybody bring them up to the altar once the song is over, and then we'll start weaving and making our pretty spokes. It's going to be a beautiful art project with all of our prayers at the end of this series. You can write whatever you want on there between you and God. And you can draw Jasper when you think. Yeah. We'll draw a yeah. picture. All right. So... I think we can go ahead. You guys ready for a prayer? And then we'll go grab the basket, start handing it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to pray? Sure. Holy God, we we give you thanks for this day, this second Sunday in Easter, um, maybe the third Sunday in Easter. We give you thanks for all of these children that are in our midst. Help us to listen to them. Help us to encourage them to participate in praying with their hearts, minds, and bodies um, so that they know that you are near and that we are beside them in all of the struggles of life that are now in their presence and those that are yet to come. Help us to breathe. Help us to feel your presence in this space today. Help us to remember to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world in our midst. Amen. All right. If you guys, one of you or several, want to grab the basket, and then I'll help you hand it out. You want to? God of unending surprises, this life is a tapestry of moments woven together, and we long to be weavers of love. Today, we gather and pray that you would unravel our bias, unravel our assumptions, unravel whatever it is that keeps us from you. 
And as you do, clear space in our hearts for your word. We are listening. We are praying. Amen. We mentioned in children's time, oops, there goes the Ebenezer. I better pick that up. So we mentioned that we're starting this series. Series are helpful because they allow us to dive a little bit deeper into the scripture um, when we have our our Bible studies after worship and when we go carrying into our week um, versus following the lectionary text, which I also um, enjoy and appreciate. Um, but we decided to do this series called Unraveled. And this has um, 12 scriptures, uh, many of which are in the Old Testament or the Torah, um, where there are stories of loss and grief, shame, um, fear, and unexpected things happen. And the humans in the story and the scriptures have to adapt. Um, so we are going to be learning about what they do when their world falls apart. And then thinking about how do we press onward um, when our tightly knit plans unravel with loose threads? What do we become when our own identity? <laughs> it's one of those mornings, you know. Where does this Ebenezer belong? I'm going to put this here. See, we have a loose thread already. So what do we do when our identity or the path that we're on comes undone? With war in the world that just seems to continue to escalate, and even with Israel and Palestine and now Iran um, striking Israel, it just makes us feel unsettled and like there's nothing we can do and if we pull on those threads the whole thing might come apart you know um, and the identity in our church there's Christian nationalism that threatens even our own faith tradition and makes it unrecognizable sometimes and that's deeply troubling where can we find hope in the midst of this unraveling that's what this series is about and sometimes life surprises us with new beginnings that we couldn't have even imagined in the midst of that unraveling and that pain. Sometimes we have unexpected joy, love, and hope, and we need God's presence and hands to unravel us because we're knotted up. We cannot find the way to untangle. Even when we're ready for change and ready to be changed. So Bree mentioned that we're going to have this art project where during Joys and Concerns each week you'll be able to write on pieces of fabric and we will weave those together um, on this creative loom um, that we have so that it is a collection of our prayers together. Prayers are individual, and then they're also part of the collective. Our first scripture reading for this series is about Abram and Sarai having a baby at 190, respectively. Unexpected, right? A change of plans. The scripture is in two parts. I'm going to read the first part now. This is Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. 
the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sayas of the finest flour and knead it and bake it. Bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to the servant who hurried to prepare it. Then he brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where's your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return you, return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing, right? 90s past the age. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, how after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, why am I ready to have a child? Will, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. The word of God for the people of God. Now, this is not the first time that Abram has heard these news. The chapter before, Abram is circumcised as an adult as a sign of the covenant and his commitment to God. And God says that he will have multitudes of children, nations of children through Sarai. And God calls them Abraham and Sarah. And Abraham's response to this in chapter 17, verse 17, is what? Anybody know? It's LOL and ROFL. Do you know what those are? Laugh out loud and roll on the floor laughing. So that verse says, Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Can Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? He rolls around on the floor laughing. And in today's reading, there are visitors. And Abram offers them a little hospitality, a little bread, a little water. And what happens? becomes a feast, right? A little bit of water to wash your feet, a little bit of bread to refresh you on your way. But somehow Abram knows to go for it, right? The beginning of the reading says that it's hot, and as the Lord appears to him, he then sees the three visitors. He doesn't just dial it in, right? This hospitality is not just a box check, right? He's bringing a lot to this meal. He has bread and water, a calf, butter, and there is a banquet. It's transformed. Sarai is listening from the tent in this conversation with the visitors and Abram. And they seem to know that she's having a child. And what is Sarai's response? 
she left, right? She also says, but I'm tired. How many times do we say this? Yes, God. Yes, Lord. But you see, I'm tired. Right? That's what Hannah's poem was about, right? Has this happened to you? Right? Got some hand raises. Where you feel a tug to do something. That God is telling you to do something and you say... Just not sure I'm up to that, God. I'm, I'm not sure I have that one in me. I'm not sure I have one more in me right now, right? And she laughs. Has anyone expressed nervous laughter? Has that happened to you? Have you experienced that? Yeah. Have you ever laughed when it's inappropriate and you knew it? like really inappropriate, like, and you couldn't stop it, and it was, like, painful. You're like, I should be crying, like, this is so awkward, and I'm laughing. Has that happened to you? It's happened to me, and it's, like, involuntary, and you're like, I don't know. I'm, like, evil or something. Like, something has come, some demon has possessed me, and I, you're trying to choke it down, that, yeah, you guys are nodding. That's, that's, I'm, I'm, glad I'm, not, I'm not glad it's not me. Many doctors think that this is the way for the body to throw off stress. Um, physiologically remove stress from wherever we're carrying it. Almost like a defense mechanism when we are experiencing trauma. And when I have experienced a trauma and laughed all the way home totally inappropriately, this is your body's response to protect um, itself because trauma isn't just in our brains. It's carried in our bodies. And there are all these new practices, humming and chanting, somatic exercises, right, to let this energy out. And it's not just meditation. You can meditate, but that's energy giving. You want to do something that lets that energy out out of your body where you're carrying it. Some of us went to Folk Fest last night, right? I saw some of you. And we danced, right? We were in, some of us were in the jack. We went back and forth from Centennial Hall to the jack, and there were these big xylophones, this whole group of, I think, like 12 people playing on these xylophones. And I was like, man, I want to get up there and bang that big one in the corner, you know, I, I, can I join this band, you know, and they had these maraca type instruments, um, this was a Zimbabwe kind of uh, practice and, and, and musical group, and they had, they had mad skills with these instruments that were like maracas, I don't know what they're called in, in Zimbabwe, but it was, it was amazing, amazing to watch, and that is an example, right, of how you're letting that energy out. It's joyful, but it is also, you know, a release. Now, I don't think that um, the encounter with God was necessarily traumatic for Sarai. But I wonder if it was boot-shaking and awe-striking and stressful for her, you know. Especially when Sarai had made Hagar her servant her slave, have Abram's heir in Ishmael. A couple chapters earlier, Sarah worried. Sarai worried that there would not be an heir. And so she arranged for Hagar to have Abram's baby. She used her privilege for this. She was abusive to Hagar. And she says in our reading, I'm worn out. I am worn out, God. Maybe this is nervous laughter, laughter, you know. She made other plans. She did some things that are tightly woven, right? She took her privilege and, and carried out her own plans. And her world begins to unravel. 
There was a time when they wanted to have children, and, and surely she had miscarriages. Surely there was a stigma to not having a child, and she would have held that in her body. When the season of childbearing passed, maybe Sarai wasn't wanting it in the same way. She was used to the grief and a life without children. She was used to carrying that, and that becomes comfortable even when it's hard. She was used to that energy being carried in her body, and it's hard to release that, to untangle it. So there's this transition that accompanies this laughter, and their names change that signify this. So Abram is renamed to Abraham from exalted father to the father of multitudes. So this is from the individual family of Abram out into the collective of Abraham, the father of the multitudes. And Sarai changes from princess and internal to her family to Sarah, the princess of the multitudes. So now we turn to the second part of the scripture, chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. This is the birth of Isaac. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in this old age. Isaac is born. And what does Isaac mean? Anybody know? Laughter. Isaac's name means this laughter. It's the Hebrew word. So friends, I want to invite you to think about Isaac as a symbol, not just of the absurdity of a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman having a baby together, but as the physical response of their bodies and the release of decades of grief and tension and stress that they needed to unravel. They must have been stuck in their grief, holding it in their bodies until God flipped the pressure relief valves so that they were R-O-F-L. The physical birth of Isaac would have pushed out a lot of the pain and loss from Sarah's body. You see, despite, you know, what she was going through, though, we can't forget Ishmael in this story, right? So Ishmael was that firstborn baby who Sarah arranged for Abram to have had through Hagar. So Sarah has this blessing and this laughter and this baby and Isaac, but she still has fears. She still has some unresolved things that are stuck. She hasn't released all that pain and the suffering of her years, and she sends Hagar and Ishmael away. She banishes them and sends them away into the wilderness. Abram is distraught, Abraham. Anybody know what Ishmael's name means? It means God listens. God listens to the boy's cries when he and his mother are cast out. 
and God saves Ishmael too and makes him the father of many nations. So friends, I want to leave you with this story of Abraham and Sarah, but also of Isaac and Ishmael and Hagar. God is present with us in our grief and our fears and in the midst of our shame and our disbelief and our doubt. When our worlds become tangled and unraveled, God is listening. God knows we're tired. God is calling upon us to believe and to release, to release that stress and that pain and that suffering physically so that we don't keep holding on to the traumas and the pain that are in our bodies and are passed down to our ancestors. I know that sounds like a lot. So I invite you this week to pay attention, to pay attention to where you are holding your pain and your stress. And may we find ways through singing, through laughter, through physical activity, through crying, to release it. May we find those spaces and places to laugh with God and with each other each day and all the days that are ahead of us. Amen. We're going to sing A Place at the Table. This is our song for this series. So you're going to get to know it and sing it together every week. It's in the worship and song number 3149.
some announcements for the ministry um, of our church. So we will have our devotional after worship for those of you who would like to join. You can join any week, all weeks, no weeks. Um, you don't have to do any preparation for this. Um, it follows the scripture each week and we'll do that um, at 1115 either in the back room um, or in my office. So all, all are welcome to participate. And if you want to take one of these booklets home, um, and just do your study in your own family or with yourself, you're also invited to do that. You can see me or Melanie after worship. Um, there is a school of theology that is going to coincide with annual conference, which is the, the last um, weekend in June. Um, so those of you who are interested in more theological study, um, there should be an online component um, available for that. Also, there are some wonderful speakers that have been that are coming up to Anchorage um, for that series, really dynamic um, time, and this is something that they're really trying to do each year. It used to be every year, and during the pandemic, we kind of took a break from this. It's sponsored by St. John's, so um, if you want to know more about that, I can give you more of those details as well. We will have um, a youth service learning camp at the end of July um, out at Eagle River United Methodist Camp. That is for um, those entering sixth grade through 12th grade, it should be a really wonderful time. Um, we've got pastors and youth coming from um, South Central Anchorage and also the rest of Southeast. So really great time for discipleship and fun out at the camp at the end of July. So all are, are welcome, um, those ages from six to 12. We're always looking for volunteers for liturgists um, and readers. And one of the most important things is um, this weekend, Saturday, we're going to have our Earth Day Festival, our spring festival here from 1230 um, to 4. We're going to have games, food, drinks um, for the kids. Juno String Ensembles will be playing um, at 4 o'clock. We're going to have a gathering for the neighborhood of Cinema Drive to just make Cinema Drive um, a little bit safer, and that'll be at 1 o'clock. The theme is Earth versus Plastics. So Mel said, um, Bree said, bring your, bring your trash, bring your plastic here um, for those activities, because we've got some fun things for the kids to do with recycled materials. Bree is going to... Um, take flyers around the neighborhoods if anybody wants to, it's a nice day if anybody wants to participate in um, dropping those off around our neighbors, um, you're invited to join Brie after worship as well. Mm -hmm. We definitely need more recycled containers or plastic or things like that, so this is a, what do you think of recycling? Of clean, clean recycle, recyclables, yes.
And the Glory Hall um, is also covered, I think, for Saturday. Um, Carol and the National Honor Society, the youth are doing that. Um, but if you're interested in helping out in May, um, the third Saturday, then um, see Melanie or Bree um, after worship. So I think that concludes announcements for today. Oh, oh. Also on Wednesdays, um, there'll oh. be choir practice at 6.30. Yes, choir, 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 sing and release all of that. <laughs> All right, I will be doing joys and concerns today. Uh, so if I hear a prayer of concern, I will say God to your love and we will say we trust this prayer. And if I hear a prayer of joy, I will say with joyful hearts we say and the response is thank you God. Uh, so first of all, I would like to pray still for traveling mercies for Barb and um, Charlie and everyone else that we know that is currently traveling, um, a lot of travels going on, and so let's take a moment and pray for that. So God to your love, trust this prayer. Um, any other prayers of concern? Um, I want to give thanks for um, the song that, um, one of the songs that Hannah sang, it was from um, Dr. Christopher Grundy um, wrote those words, and he was my preaching and liturgy professor at um, Eden Theological Seminary, so I'm forgetting the name because I'm short on sleep these days. It is, come to me, come to me. Wasn't that beautiful? So I think we should sing that again sometime. So thank you to Dr. Grundy for that beautiful music and, and those words. And on the, backing track, on the backing track, that was all of our kids that you heard. They went to record with Hannah um, about six months ago. So yeah. those, were, those were our kids singing in the background. Uh, so, with joyful hearts we say, thank, thank you, you God. God. And also I want to give thanks for Folkfest, um, to be able to have a free music festival for so many days is just such a gift of our community. So, if you haven't been down to Centennial Hall or the Jack, um, and you have plans this afternoon, just cancel them. Go to the Jack, go, go participate in Folkfest and, and let your body move and, and, and get release all of that stress. So. With joyful hearts we say, thank you, thank God. You, thank you, God. Uh, any other prayers of joy or concern today? Um, <laughs> um, a lot of concern um, about the situation in the Middle East. So I pray for peace. Uh, we are going to pray for the situation in the Middle East for peace, for wisdom, and for God to speak to the hearts of all involved. God, to your love, trust this prayer. Us. We uh, greatly miss David, and uh, we are joyful that he is doing well, uh, but we miss him very much. So for his good recovery, let's, with joyful hearts, we say, thank you, God. And for his continued recovery, for God to be with him and his family, God, to your love, we trust this prayer. Any other prayers of joy or concern today? Um, I was just asking a prayer for my uncle. Uh, they just flew um, to Anchorage. Uh, as you all know that he's um, doing dialysis every day. And they went there to um, uh, um, emergency uh, doing uh, surgery for him. So ask for pray for him to recover. And the last one, um, asking for prayer that my husband is living tomorrow morning to for job. Thank you so much. So first of all, a prayer of concern for her uncle. What was your uncle's name? John. John, thank you. 
All right, a prayer of concern for John, that God would surround John with his loving, healing power and the rest of the family, that he would be there with them. Uh, with joyful heart, oh, sorry, that's the wrong prayer. God, to your love, we trust this prayer. For traveling mercies, as people are flies, you're flying to Craig for shop. Uh, so, God, to your love, we trust this prayer. Any other prayers of joy or concern? All right, then I will close us, uh, if we could pray together, the prayer of confession. God of unexpected joy and answered prayers, we confess that sometimes things feel too good to be true, while at other times we wonder if you hear us at all. When life unravels for the worst, we blame you. But when life unravels for the best, filling our days with holy surprise, we tend to praise ourselves, thinking we've earned this unexpected joy. Forgive us. Help us to see you in our midst, and with every breath that turns into a laugh, draw us closer to you. Amen. We have now reached the time in our service where we will bring up the strips of cloth that you all have that you were invited to hold or write a prayer on or draw. If you all, during this song that Hannah is going to sing, if you all can bring up your strips and place them in this basket, that at the end of the service, um, we will weave them into the loom. And then next week, the loom will have the prayers woven in, and we'll have new strips. So I invite you all to do that as Hannah sings.
pray with me. God of abundant love, God of creation, God of time and hope, we are worried and we are busy. We feel shame and hopelessness. Often we are overscheduled. We feel anxious about all the things that need to happen each day. We're worried about the violence in our community and in our world. We are grateful for the peacemakers who answer your call, even when they are tired. We are uncertain how to respond in ourselves, for our families, and our neighbors. God, give us light and hope. Help us to remember. Let's remember that we are Easter people. May we remember that the resurrection and the cross let us know that in the midst of suffering and pain, there is rebirth and hope. God, let your light shine in our hearts today. Bless those who are hurting, those who are grieving, those who are hungry. Bring peace to our divided world, O oh God. Give strength to the people who are struggling and in pain. God, be with Aldersgate United Methodist Church. Help us with our disbelief and give us hope when there are so many people to pray for. God, be with all who face tough times and let your light shine on them, reminding them that you are with them. Help us feel your presence where your hope and your love continually pour out on us. These prayers and hopes we offer in assurance and gratitude for your love in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Now let us join in singing the Womanist Lord's Prayer together. We call upon your name, your kingdom come, your will be done in all the spaces in which you dwell. Give us each day sustenance and perseverance. Remind us of all limits as we give grace to the limits of others. Separate us from the temptation of empire and deliver us into community. For you are the dwelling place within us. The empowerment around us and the celebration among us, now and forever, amen. Now and forever, amen. God. I turn that off when I sing, especially when I sing the Lord's Prayer, out of deep and abiding respect for all of you. I want to invite you um, to offer your gifts of service um, this weekend, to offer your gifts of recyclables um, and your time 
and your prayers and your witness. Um, and for those who are participating in um, monetary gifts, we invite you to put your offering in the plate that is in the back, um, or you can tithe online using the QR code, or you can mail a check into Aldersgate. Um, we don't receive mail at the church, but our P.O. box um, is up there on the screen. We thank you for, for each of your gifts. Now I invite you to stand and sing our doxology, um, and we will remain standing for the sending forth. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. skies let the creator's praise rise let the redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue turn all thy mercy shall sound from shore to shore till suns rise and set no more praise god from whom all blessings flow praise god all creatures here below praise god above ye heavenly hosts your son and holy ghost. don't want to hear my doxology, I promise. Beloved family and friends, I send you forth. I invite you to laugh, to cry, to grieve, to do so with your bodies, not just your minds. May you find moments to listen to what God is telling you about what you are holding. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with yourself and with one another in accord with Jesus Christ, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go in peace with the Holy Spirit. Amen. This thread I weave, this step I dance, this stone I carve, this ball I bounce, this nail I drive, this pearl I string, this flag I wave, this note I sing, this pot I shape, this fire I light, this fence I leap, this bone I knit, this seed I nurse, this rift I mend, this child I raise, this earth I tend. Ooh.
This check I write, this march I join, this faith I state, this truth I sign, this is small part in one small place of one's heart's beat for one's great peace. This thread I weave, this step I dance, this stone I carve, this ball I bounce, this nail I drive, this pearl I strain, this flag. This note I This check I write, this march I join, this faith I state, this truth I sign, this is small part in one small place of one heart's beat for one great peace. Peace. This is small part in one small place of one heart's beat. For one great peace.